A good day to you guys. Welcome back to your favorite channel. Thank you guys for joining us once again today. We hope that you guys will be blessed, nurtured and nourished by the word that we have to share. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. Make sure you pass it on to somebody else and make sure that they're blessed as well this Sunday. We hope you guys are blessed by the word. Lots of love from him and us. A very good morning to you. It's wonderful to see you again today. Thank you for joining us. I trust that your week was wonderful. Uh, this morning, I want us to look at the subject of studying God's Word. I know it's a very basic uh, topic, but it's a fundamental topic. As basic as it is, it is, it's very important and very crucial in our Christian lives, in our work with the Lord. Um, as, a, as a church this year, our theme is rooting, grounding, making disciples. Rooting, grounding, making disciples. That's the reason I'm visiting this particular topic, I know some of you, um, I will not be mentioning anything new. It's an exhortation, an encouragement. But to some, it will be a teaching. Uh, the Bible uh, um, does exhort us to t teach one another and exhort one another. It must be a, a statement that I heard from uh, Mike Medock. Uh, he said, the secret to your success or your future lies in your daily routine. The secret secret to your success or your future lies in your daily routine. Uh, this, uh, this, so uh, studying God's word is a daily routine that is key to our success in the, in, the, in the present and also in the future. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. Notice it says day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. So it's not only meditating, it's action. Uh, observe to do according to all that is written then in. Uh, the reason, the results rather, for then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. Another version of the Bible says you will deal wisely in the affairs of this life. Powerful stuff. I love that. Psalm 1 verse 1 to 3 says blessed, or as the amplified version would say, happy, fortunate, to be envied is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly nor stands in the uh, path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. Uh, then it goes on to say, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Hallelujah. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. So um, he meditates meditate again. Notice he mentions day and night. So that uh, what it implies and what it, it is stating is that the study of God's word should be a daily routine. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 19 says, we, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. Peter was talking about his uh, experience at the Mount of Transfiguration. And then he, he contrasts that with the written word. He says, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. Where unto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shines in a dark place. Until the day dawn and this day star arise in your hearts. And then it goes on to say, knowing this. That no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. But holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. I love verse 21, which is what, one that I'm zeroing in on, zooming in. For the prophecy not came in old time but, uh, by the will of man. But holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So what we have is the Bible. It's not man's opinion. They wrote as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. I love this particular scripture in the Amplified Version. Uh, let me uh, open it up and read it. In the Amplified Version of the Bible, um, as, the, as it says, it does amplify. Second Peter and uh, chapter 1, I will read verse 21. For no prophecy ever originated because some men willed it. To do so, it never came by human impulse. I love that. Uh, for no prophecy ever originated because some men willed it. it, it to do so, it never came by human impulse. But men spoke from God who were born along, moved and impelled by the Holy Spirit. I love that. Moved and impelled by the Holy Spirit. So, what it is saying is that uh, the scriptures, uh, men were moved by the Holy Spirit. Uh, so it is the word of God. Hallelujah. Second um, Timothy chapter 2 verse 15. Study to show yourself approved unto God. 
a workman that d- does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Hallelujah. So we have to study. Proverbs 4 verse 20. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Hallelujah. For they are life unto those that find them. And health or medicine to all their flesh. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly finished unto all good works. Hallelujah. So, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. And so that's the reason we need to study it. And so we want to go into detail uh, in terms of studying it. Um, in this, I want to give credit to uh, um, uh, a, a, a course that I attended, Langham uh, teaching course, and also uh, a particular book that was cited in there by Ramesh Richard, uh, the book called Scripture, Scripture. So in studying the text, which Bible scholars, scholars call exegesis, breaking down the text, uh, Ramesh Richard in his book Scripture Scripture mentions two approaches, two two things. In that there, there is number one, where you there is the seeing of the details of a text, which is observation, um, and then number two, seeking meaning from the details, which is interpretation, understanding what is meant by those details, uh, and this particular aspect involves questions and answers, where. Uh, uh, you, 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 you ask questions and you answer them. So, if we were to put it uh, down, it, it will be uh, you observe and then you analyze and then the last step is in observing, you are asking, what does the passage say? In analyzing, you are looking at what does the passage mean? In applying, you are saying, how does the passage work in my life? How do I apply it in my life? Uh, like I said, for me, this is basic in our lives as believers. But it's the building block. It's the foundation, let me say. It's the foundation. It's, the, it's, it's what carries us in our Christian lives. Uh, it doesn't matter what office you occupy in life. Whether you're in the fivefold, whether you are uh, in the helps. Ministry, it doesn't matter. Every one of us, this applies to us. Uh, so let's look at this in detail. Um, I and encourage you to write down and uh, uh, and apply this truth. I, I, I was saying uh, when I was sharing this in uh, at one uh, is that uh, last year as an assembly, what we did is to go through the Bible uh, corporately. We're doing uh, mainly five chapters a day, and what I discovered uh, with that aspect of doing that is that. It gives us a panoramic view of the Word of God. You, you have a, 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 a drawn view of the... I'm, I'm using the modern day terminology. You have a, a drawn view of, of the Word. And it, uh, it, it, it enables you to be able to interpret. When you find a passage, you can now bounce back to say, okay, this was said in this passage of Scripture, on this passage of Scripture. Now, because to come to a correct interpretation... You must compare scripture with scripture. You, uh, uh, Jesus quoted in the Old Testament to say, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, the truth shall be established. So you need two, three or more scriptures. So if you don't know any of the scripture, you, you are focusing on one. You, it becomes difficult because you only know uh, just that portion you are focusing on. So reading through the Bible, I think it should be the aim of every Christian. Uh, reading through the Bible uh, each year. Uh, I, I know there's many plans that are out there that we can utilize and many resources that are out there on the net and everywhere else. But I encourage us to read. Uh, I know the, 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 the volume of what you have to read is massive, but what I discover with that is that when you read, even though you are not spending too much time on the chapters, because the Holy Spirit is the author of the book, you find that as you are going along, he, along, he, he brings to remembrance what you read. Things just begin clicking and you get revelation when you are not even reading the Bible, but the scripture just comes alive. Pa, like that. I remember 
uh, uh, when we were, when I was still at school doing all levels, we were doing uh, in, when we were doing English literature, we had set books that we had to read. Uh, we had poetry. We had uh, 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 Shakespeare's Macbeth. We had George Orwell's Animal Farm, etc., etc. So we, I remember at the time when we read uh, read uh, Shakespeare's Macbeth, there would be moments where we would be arguing that, oh, okay, what William Shakespeare actually meant in this was this. And somebody would come up with an ad, another uh, uh, angle to say, no, 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 no. I think in this line, this is what he meant. Why? We, we would, the, I think personally, we would actually attribute things to William Shakespeare that he never actually intended to. Some, some credit that he never, uh, b- because he was not there to, to, to defend what he, he wrote. But when it comes to the Bible, you, you, there is nothing like that. When you are reading it, the author of the book is with you, uh, who is the Holy Spirit, so he can assist you to interpret that. Now, uh, as you shall see along, we will talk about resources that uh, we can also use. But I'm simply saying the Bible is unique in that it's the only book that when you read, the author is there with you. The other books, you will only have the autograph of the author. Uh, they'll just autograph it. When you're buying it, that's it. You are, they, are, they are gone. But the Bible, the author of the book is with you. And so, uh, this panoramic view of the Bible is very important, I, I believe. It, it helps us. As, as you, w- when you've read, you, you, you are enriched and you are, you are able to see the whole picture. And the Holy Spirit brings these scriptures and makes them alive um, as you go along. So let's uh, uh, come back to what I was saying, seeing the details. When we are seeing the details, in other words, we've read the passage, what we do is we observe words and relationships between words. Um, when we observe words, A, what we do is we take note of key words, key words, words that are significant, words that are repeated, words that are unusual, words that are long, uh, you, you take note of those. And then the relationship between words, what you then do is that there are two types of relationships that you uh, note. The first one is grammatical relationships. And these involve verbs. Um, uh, then it involves whether the, 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 the text is singular, the, whether it's plural, uh, whether you look, you, you, you also, the gender. For instance, when we talk about the singular plural Genesis one twenty six. It says, "Then God said, let us notice plural.' He doesn't say, let me, let us.' So, w- whatever words are put in the Bible are deliberate. Let us make men in our image. So it was who was speaking? God, the, the Godhead. Why does why does he speak in plural? Because it's Godhead, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So these are things you observe. The, 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 whether it's singular or plural. So you, the, 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 these are the grammatical relationships. And then you also look at the logical relationships. Um, in other words, how is the passage built up? How is the argument built up? Uh, you look at words like um, but, because, for. You, you, when you find a passage and there's the word but, what it implies is that whatever would have been said earlier is cancelled. Uh, and the, the, the but changes everything. Uh, you then have to focus on what comes after but. First John chapter 4, verse 20, for instance, says, if someone says, I love God, but hates his brother, but, I know some Bibles would use end there. And so you, the, the but hates his brother. In other words, what it then implies, you are, you're saying you love God is... is, is is non-existent if you hate your brother. You are a liar. But hates his brother. He's a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen. How can he love God whom he has not seen? So those are the logical relationships that we, we, we have to look at. There's many others that we probably do not have time to look at at this particular time. The other relationships that we look at um, in terms of uh, the relationships between words, we look at the geographical um, or chronological relationships. In other words, you look at the when and where of a passage. Uh, when and where, when you look at the book of Jonah, for instance, 
He moves from Tashish. He, all right, there's Nineveh where he's given. So those are the things that you look and look at um, uh, in terms of uh, some of the uh, relationships. Then you look at also the psychological relationships. Um, in other words, you are looking at the feelings. What was the author feeling? Uh, are they negative or positive? Um, the feelings of the shepherd, uh, the David, the psalmist, when he writes, when he writes in the book of Psalms and others also that write, you t- I, I find they, have, they were very expressive. They would, sometimes they would start by complaining, oh Lord, why do the wicked prosper? Why am I in this situation? And then they would transition and end up praising God. So you pick up those emotions and you, 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 you are able to tell what was going through the author and what was being communicated. Um, you, you look at uh, many other things, the, the animosity between Jews and Samaritans. You look at the background. What led to that when this woman uh, in John chapter 4 says, you being a Jew, you are asking water for me, etc., etc. Those are the kind of psychological relationships that you look at. And then you also look at contextual relationships. In other words, the setting of the passage, the context of the Bible, the context of the book, the context of the text. Uh, that is, is very important. Where is it, where is it placed in, in, in the whole picture? That brings to mind what I mentioned earlier on about this panoramic view of the Bible. That, that then it's important for us to go through the whole Bible uh, regularly so that we are uh, in sync. We are always up to date uh, uh, or always have the information at our fingertips. Hallelujah. Um, so we need to seek to accept. That's why I started to show self-approved unto God, a workman that does not need to be ashamed. Hallelujah. The other the relationship we have to look at is the relationship in genre. In other words, uh, what I mean by that is the biblical literature. Uh, where is the passage? What kind of biblical re- literature are you reading? In other words, uh, the Bible has different types of literature. There's the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. So if you are reading in John, you then have to understand uh, the way the, the, each of the, of the writers put across. Uh, when maybe you are reading the epistles. The epistles are not the wife of the apostles. Epistles are the letters that were written by the disciples. Paul, right from uh, uh, um, Romans going onwards. So the, the, these letters uh, also uh, uh, expand on, on uh, the, the narrative the, the, uh, or expound the, the, the meaning of the gospel. Uh, sometimes you are reading the narratives or the poetic books, Psalms, Proverbs, Song of Solomon, Ecclesiastics. So uh, you then have to understand uh, uh, prophetic writings, uh, Revelation, the book of Daniel. So you have to understand what kind of literature are you reading in terms of then how to interpret what you are reading. Um, the books of the law, first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch. So you have, these are things that we have to understand. Um, um, so when we are then therefore uh, observing, um, that's what we look at. Um, to, to, to then, then, for us to understand the text, we must then ask questions. Who, what, why, when, which, how? Ask questions. That's how we get to understand. If you don't ask questions, you won't know anything. You won't clean anything. You won't find uh, the, 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 the truth of the word. You must ask questions when you read. Uh, I, uh, I've always said, and I say it again, the, the Bible is not like a newspaper. If you read a newspaper, you are done. You, you can, for, in the days of the, the print paper, you would then throw it away, burn it, use it to start a fire or something. But when you read the Bible, you, 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 it's it's alive. You've got to you've got to then ask questions. That that's when the 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 logos, the written word of God, becomes the rema, uh, meaning the, the 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 spoken word, the word that's alive, the word that's for you. The way it becomes alive to you is when you ask those questions: why, who, what, why, when, which, how. Okay, so it's important there. So you you realize studying God's word is not just a a walk in the park. Um, um, I, I was, I, I've shared before that to say uh, we grew up in the scripture union. Scripture union uh, taught us, we would call it quiet time, this daily routine that we are talking about. But it's not necessarily quiet all the time because when you are reading, sometimes you've got to speak aloud 
that particular word. Say it out so that you hear it because the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing through the word. So uh, Scripture Union had a, a, a devotional Bible called the Daily Power, uh, which had a passage each, each day and then commentary on that. It helps, helped us to develop that culture of the daily routine of reading God's word. May I say as well, sometimes a lot of us are very busy, but in our business, we are either driving, cooking, cleaning, whatever we're doing. What we can do is to also look for resources, the audio Bible. Let it be playing in the background. Instead of playing some funny uh, 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 musician somewhere who will be swearing and cursing, let uh, the word of God be the one that's playing the background. Uh, and, and you are listening to the scriptures. It, it will end, come in subconsciously, whatever, even though you are busy with what, whatever stuff you are doing. Let it be playing. This, we are living in, uh, in, in the age of information with these smartphones and all of that. Let's use them for, for positive uh, outcomes. So, that was observing the details. The second one is seeking meaning from, from the details. Uh, this is where we interpret the passage which I've just been talking about. An interpretation is basically asking questions about what you have observed and then answering the questions. By asking questions, by, in other words, when you're seeking the details, what we mean, you ask questions, you answer questions, you analyze the answers, and then you apply the answers. That's how the Bible becomes alive to you. Okay, so when we're asking questions, we ask questions about what we have observed earlier on. We mentioned the words, number one. We said observe the words uh, um, in terms of uh, those particular words. In other words, you ask yourself, what does the word mean today? What did it mean in Bible days? How else is the word used in the book, in the Bible? In that particular book you are reading, also in the Bible. Again, it shows you how you must have that uh, whole panoramic uh, view of the Bible. What does the word mean today? So, don't assume that you know the word. Ask, ask, ask those questions. Then you ask questions about relationships. Um, grammatical relationships, which we mentioned earlier on. The but, the because, because, uh, and, and etc. Et you ask questions about the logical relationships. The chronological and geographical relationships. Sometimes it's important, these paperback, the, the uh, uh, Bibles, uh, uh, study Bibles would have maps at the end of the Bible. Geographical relationships turn to the end there. Look at the map and see where Jericho is. Uh, and uh, uh, where G as Jesus says, the man went from Jericho to Jerusalem and fell among thieves. Where is? Now I'm not saying it's important to know where he was beaten by the thieves, but at least have an idea of the geographical location. I know a lot of people also tend to uh, uh, organize trips to the Holy Land and experience uh, the actual place, I'm, I'm sure that's very, even it cements that whole aspect of the Bible becoming alive to say, I'm in Bethlehem. Obviously, that's under Palestinian control. What, what, but whatever. So and ask questions about chronological or geographical relationships, psychological relationships, which we mentioned, the feelings that the psalmist was feeling, the contextual relationships, what comes before, what comes after. Uh, where does this passage fall in all of this? How does it relate to the whole Bible? Don't just pick up anything. Uh, actually, with the Bible, you can support any doctrine. You can just pick up anything if you don't contextualize it and look at the whole context. Apartheid in South Africa was supported by the Bible. Segregation. Can you imagine? Even some of the chaps that practiced slavery back then would support it with the Bible. So what I'm simply saying, with the Bible, you can pick up any verse and then run with it uh, and, and go in, in another direction. And, and, and Polygamy. Other people are living in polygamy. They are using verses to support their polygamous relationships. So you can pick up a, a verse and you run with it and you go into error. So the contextual aspect is very, is very important. The relationships in genre those are things that you need to ask. Uh, the, the, the way the, 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 the Proverbs are written, uh, they are different. They are not written like what the Gospels are written because he would contrast, do contrast and all of that. So you need to be able to understand that. 
So, in answering questions, that's where we then use Bible resources. Number one, as a believer, you must have a very good Bible. I, I, I implore you to invest in a very good study Bible. I have many of them. Some of them were, I was given, some I bought, but I invested. Um, I, I normally love uh, using the Spirit Filled Life Bible. Uh, it's, it's, it's Pentecost, it's, charisma, it's charismatic. <laughs> But I've got the uh, NIV study Bible. I've got the application, life application Bible. I use all of these resources. But again, obviously, uh, it's important. Uh, I find it's important to also have different versions of the Bible. If you have a King James, get an NIV. Uh, because when you're answering questions, sometimes you might have a, a word in the King James that says, like the word conversation. In the King James, the word conversation means talking between two or more people. But it also means lifestyle. Uh, so if you don't know that, you can e wrongly interpret the verse. But whereas if you read that particular verse in the King James and then you read in the NIV the same passage, the, the NIV will throw different light on what you've just read or even the Amplified. So in terms of paperback, I've got also the NIV, the Amplified. So you, you read that. So get different versions of the Bible. I like some Bible study Bibles would have also commentary in the margins and uh, comments and uh, references to other verses. So you need to, you can also concordances. Uh, uh, I've got Strong's exhaustive concordance to the Bible, Bible dictionary. I've got Vine's expository dictionary on New and Test and Test and on, on all the New Testament words, commentary. I've got Matthew, Henry's, and all of others. Uh, but in our day, we have a lot of this stuff all in one place in Bible software. PC Study Bible, eSword, uh, and, and etc. Um, and also applications that can be put on our phones. Uh, I, I personally use the U-Vision uh, that was developed by Life Church uh, from the United States of America. The U-Vision. Uh, advantage with that, you can download different versions of the Bible. That's on my mobile devices. But on the laptop, I use the uh, PC Study Bible. So uh, the U version, you can ampli uh, uh, I've got on there. I've got the New King James, which is my main uh, text. Uh, King James, NIV, complete Jewish Bible, Amplified, uh, Ndebele Bible, Shona Bible. It's got about 660-something translations of the scriptures. If you are in, can read Mandarin, you can download Mandarin. Uh, so it's, it's, let's use these resources uh, so that we use these to answer questions. So, you know, answering questions, that means you then go uh, and look even when you are using these uh, concordances and dictionaries, you then look at uh, the Hebrew word, the Greek word. I can't read Hebrew or Greek, but I depend on these resources that are already there. I, I, I would then quote the Greek Strong's number and all of that. But they then explain the Greek and the Hebrew uh, in the original writings. So then that's how we uh, are able to answer questions. When we analyze the questions, we then are asking the meaning of the passage. Does it line up with the rest of scripture? Like I said, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, the truth shall be established. And then we finally, we apply the answers to our lives. How does this truth of scripture apply to me? Because uh, as Joshua 1 8 says, and you must observe to do, after you have meditated, observe to do according to all that is written therein. No wonder the word meditate means to ponder. To, 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 the, the example given is one of the cow chewing the card. In other, in other words, when you have read, you generally then bring it up back again and begin to think over it and over it. To ponder, to, 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 to muse. To, to, to think deeply. That's what you do when you are uh, studying God's word. So, my message this morning is to encourage us to not lose that discipline of reading God's word daily. If you are too busy to read God's word, you are too busy. I repeat, if you are too busy to read God's word, you are too busy to read and study. You are too busy. In other words, slow down. Get into the word. Uh, uh, a lot of people have moved over into error because they've stopped that simple daily discipline. Uh, 
whether in the fivefold ministry you hear somebody moving off in a tangent with a funny doctrine. Why? They've missed this aspect of discipline of getting into the word. Others go dry as believers, as Christians. Why? The Bible is the food to our souls, food to our spirit. If you don't read God's, God's word, if you, can't, if, you're not, if you're not hearing from God, from his word, how else do you grow? So, it has to be a daily discipline. I know this sounds basic, but it's as basic as it is, I believe it's deep stuff. Because this is where our lives are crafted as believers. You must have that discipline. Be able to shut out the outside world and study, read and study God's word. Uh, that's how our lives are built up as Christians. If you miss it here as a believer, you are gone. Full stop. You are gone. You don't start by not coming to church. You start by not reading God's word. Uh, you'll still be going to church, but two, three weeks, no, no nothing. And then suddenly you are feeling dry. Suddenly you are backslidden. Suddenly the temptation overtakes you. Why? Because the psalmist says, your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Resistant to, resistance to temptation disappears when you are not studying God's word and praying. You, you, are, you, are, you, you, you become vulnerable. You, 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 are, you are easy prey. You are, the, the devil can play around and, and, and drop you uh, in a day, would say, two feet. He, he can... Uh, he, he. So I'm simply saying, my encouragement this morning, brothers and sisters, is let's not neglect this aspect of our Christian lives. This is where it began and this is where it continues. This is where it's built. This is where the Christian life takes its source. Its root. Uh, someone says, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. This, is the as this aspect of our Christian life is the root system. When a tree, you know, sometimes you drive through a, 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 wherever a neighborhood and then you discover a tree is fallen after some strong wind you go closer you discover no the root system is gone it looked like a massive steady big tree but there came a wind wind speaks of the problems in life uh, and the troubles that we face and then they hit that tree it falls but how, why does it fall the root system is gone so we fall when our root system is gone so the, the, the roots are not seen we only see the leaves. So this aspect of our Christian lives is not seen. We don't see where they are reading God's word. We don't follow up. But we will see it when the storms hit you. When the winds come, we will see you topple over because the root system is gone. So let's take care of the root system. That's where we draw nourishment from. Hallelujah. I trust that I have stayed you and encouraged you uh, to... Uh, Continue, if you are, uh, obviously I would assume you are doing that, to continue studying God's word. But if you are not, to, to, to uh, resuscitate that habit of daily study and, and, and reading of God's word. It's important. We must be uh, workmen that need not to be ashamed. Hallelujah. So this week as you study God's word, may the Lord richly bless you and may you get mighty revelations that will transform your life and impact those that are around you. And I want to end by saying, if you're not a believer, you need to uh, commit your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and accept him as Lord and Savior. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and be my Savior, according to Romans 10, 9, 9 and 10. When you do that, that's when your journey of getting to know God by studying God's word begins. When you become a child of God. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you and may you have a wonderful week. Amen and amen.